So welcome to the African History Network show right here on the AM, the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. And we are live. We're broadcasting also on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Well, a lot of people um, are talking about NDRE and Joe Rogan. The uh, and Joe Rogan is a podcast host, among other things. And Indy Ari um, announced uh, back on February, between February 2nd and February 3rd, that she was pulling her music from uh, Spotify, the streaming service, Spotify. And she cited two reasons. Uh, one was dealing with uh, Joe Rogan and um, his usage of the N-word in uh, numerous podcasts. And she actually posted on her Instagram uh, stories. She actually posted on her Instagram stories a video of Joe Rogan using um, the Instagram during this podcast uh, a number of times, okay? And we know Spotify has pulled... um, at last count, 120 episodes of Joe Rogan's uh, The Rogan Experience. Now, I'd heard about Joe Rogan here and there before this, never really paid a whole lot of attention to him. Started paying more attention when I found out that he was getting, he has a contract with Spotify for $100 million, $100 million for his podcast. Okay. Um, I think he has about 6 million subscribers, something like that for his podcast on Spotify. So I was looking at some stories and I, and I saw the, uh, actually the initial, uh, post that NDRE did on, um, on her Instagram uh, page. I actually posted that on our Facebook fan page, the African history network, the African history network. In our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. So, we're going to talk about this uh, today. And um, th- there's a, a piece from Good Morning America that deals with this as well. Now, we know Joe Rogan is apologizing now for using the N word, and he's basically saying it's uh, unacceptable uh, to, to, to do that. Joe Rogan apologizes for regretful and shameful past use of the N word. But also, uh, Indy Ire talked about the. Um, she also talked about in the music industry, the streaming platforms and specifically Spotify, how the artists get paid very little money for uh, to be on those platforms for, for their music to stream. They get paid very little money for. It. They get paid uh, for. Uh, one stream of a song, they get paid less than a penny. Basically, they get paid like a fraction of a penny. So she talked about that as well. And also recently, she has called out the music industry for um, racist and uh, for being racist and sexist, etc. Now, Indy Ire was on the Tamron Hall show uh, back on February 4th. And I'm going to share an excerpt of that interview as well. So we're going to talk about NDRE pulls music from Spotify over Joe Rogan's racial slurs regarding black people. And she also blasts the music industry for being racist, sexist and deceitful, racist, sexist and deceitful. And in the interview with Tamron Hall, she talks about how the, the toll that being in the music industry has taken on her mentally, especially being a dark skinned African American woman in uh, the music industry, okay, and dealing with racism, different things like this. All right. So we'll talk about that. Then also, we have a uh, update in the case dealing with uh, Amir Locke out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. We know that um, there was uh, an arrest made. Uh, in relationship to the arrest, uh, in relationship to the arrest warrant that the uh, Minneapolis police were uh, executing. Okay, so a uh, 17-year-old 
uh, in connection to the search warrant um, that led to Amir Locke's death has been arrested. OK, so we'll talk about that as well uh, on today's show. All right. And then um, I'm going to talk briefly about this story dealing with um, A.J. Johnson. A.J. Johnson, remember her from House Party and remember her from Baby Boy. Um, A.J. Johnson, I, I, I posted about this on our, on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network. And it was a, and I hope I could pull this up here. There was a, a, a post I did a few days ago. Uh, BlackAmericaWeb.com had this article dealing with um, A.J. Johnson because on Angela Yee's podcast, Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club, uh, it was a group of women. They were talking about sex, different things like this. And A.J. Johnson talked about uh, having a threesome for her 50th birthday, but it was two men and her. OK, and I posted about this on our uh, Facebook fan page, the African History Network and my personal page, Michael, Michael Imhotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. And it got some uh, interesting uh, responses. And you had um, a lot of women saying good for her, you know, it's her business, et cetera. They weren't judging her, things like that. Then you had. And you had um, a smaller number of men who felt the same way. But then you had some men that had like a lot of negative things to say about her. But um, obviously they didn't read the article very well and didn't watch the interview. And so in the article from blackamericaweb.com, there's also um, uh, the panel discussion in, in, in the article as well. I'm looking here uh, at my post to, to pull it up. So I'm going to, so let's see, let me pull this up right here. So um, on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my social media platforms, I'm going to have a panel discussion with some African-American female uh, therapists and intimacy coaches and relationship coaches to deal with this from like a uh, educated professional perspective. So I posted on February 4th. So which one, uh, so which of my African-American female sex therapist friends want to be on my panel? And I said, uh, we're going to have a panel discussion on my show. So I ain't going to be here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. It's going to be it's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my social media platform. So follow me on Facebook, The African History Network, The African History Network. Follow me on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. And uh, follow me on YouTube, uh, uh, if, uh, The African History Network and uh, uh, Michael M. Hotep on YouTube. OK, because we're going to do it there. So I posted all I'm going to all I'm going to say is I'm not going to criticize her. So the headline was baby boy actress. Um, and here's the here's the article here from blackamericaweb.com also. Baby boy actress AJ Johnson describes threesome with two men as best 50th birthday ever, as best 50th birthday ever. So this story went viral. I mean, we got over it was like within a day over 1500 um uh likes on on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. When I posted it. I didn't think it was going to explode like this. It exploded. We got hundreds and hundreds of comments. And it, and I went through and read some of the comments. And um, from some of the comments, um, I can see that some things that some female friends of mine have said to me before that a lot of men don't understand women is really true from some of those comments that I saw from men. OK, so it, it explains a lot. That's all I'm going to say. So we're going to deal with this and it's going to be uh, very insightful. Um, so look out for that 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, Wednesday, February 9th. OK, follow me on the, my uh, Facebook fan page. Turn on uh, notifications, live notifications. So, you know, when we go live as well. OK, and we'll, we'll discuss that. All right. So on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct wrong behavior. 
what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. And when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. All right, we're coming up here on the break. Calling numbers 313 778 7600. 313 778 7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Um, and be sure to uh, sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T, to 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K E M E T, to 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. Uh, or visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can sign up for our email newsletter there as well, because I'm going to send out an email blast on Wednesday for the uh, 8 p.m. panel discussion I'm doing with the sisters dealing with uh, A.J. Johnson. And one of the things that it, it appears that a lot of men missed in this story is that the two men that she was with were there to please her as opposed to the other way around. But that just goes to show you how these men were thinking. The, the men that were commenting and didn't really know what they were commenting on, they uh, apparently they didn't pick up on that. So that's part of the problem. All right. You listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry, it's larger than the art world, and I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre, I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on that 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022, and we are live. Calling numbers 313. 313- 778-7600 is the call in number. If you have a question or comment, 313-778-7600 is the call in number. If you have a question or comment. Okay, so uh, I want to jump into this first topic here. And this deals with um, NDRE. And uh, NDRE announced back on uh, Tuesday, February 1st, that she was pulling her uh, music from Spotify, the streaming service, Spotify. And one of the reasons that she cited, what we're going to clip one here in just a second, Shakita. Uh, one of the reasons that she cited was the, um, the, the, the use of uh, the N word by uh, Joe Rogan on his podcast. Now this piece here from, insider.com also um there's a good article from blackenterprise.com on this topic as well that uh we'll discuss also but uh, this article here from insider.com businessinsider.com ndire shares clips of joe rogan saying the n-word as she asks spotify to remove her music over his language around race so ndire says she's removing her music and podcasts from spotify uh, Indy Ire, who's 46 years old, shared video clips of Joe Rogan, who's 54 years old, saying the N-word slur numerous on numerous podcasts over the years. OK, numerous podcasts over the years. Now, we also know that um, 
singers Neil Young and Joni Mitchell previously requested Spotify remove their music over COVID-19 misinformation. All right, now, uh, singer NDRE shared clips of um, podcaster Joe Rogan repeatedly saying the N-word on his Spotify uh, podcast, which she said led her led to her demands for the streaming service to remove her music. OK, so this goes back to um, February 2nd, fe sorry, uh, February 1st, Tuesday, February 1st, uh, when she said on Instagram and she posted uh, a video on Instagram explaining why she was doing this. OK, so uh, in January 2022, uh, Neil Young and singer Joni Mitchell uh, said they wanted their music removed uh, from Spotify, from the streaming service Spotify, over COVID-19 uh, vaccine misinformation. And they cited Joe Rogan as a proponent of disseminating false information. All right. Now, here is a, a post from uh, NDRE's Instagram page, and I follow her on Instagram. Uh, she said, I have decided to pull my music and podcast from Spotify. Neil Young opened a door that I must walk through. I believe in freedom of speech. However, I find Joe Rogan problem, Joe Rogan problematic for reasons other than his COVID-19 interview. So in the video, she explains how her reasons for removing her music from Spotify are, are go beyond Joni Mitchell and Neil Young. It's part that's part of the reason COVID nineteen mis misinformation, but it goes beyond that. She said, "For me, it's also his language around race. For me, is also his language around race." She said, "This shows the type of." Oh, let me back up. She said, "What I am talking about is respect. Who gets it, and who doesn't." What I'm talking about is respect. Who gets it and who doesn't? Paying musicians a fraction of a penny and him, Joe Rogan, $100 million. Joe Rogan has a $100 million contract with Spotify. I'm still trying to figure out how the hell is he doing this with a podcast. I'm doing something. I'm, I'm doing something wrong now. We, this 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 the year we're going to change all this. This fool's getting 100 million dollars talk about white privilege a hundred million dollars for a podcast are you serious this show the type of company they are and the company that they keep okay i'm tired i'm tired all right I, and in 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 the words of uh, uh smoky robinson and miracles i second that emotion okay i, I want to go to <laughs> I want to go to clip number one here. This is from um, uh, this is Indy I read the post she did back on Instagram February 1st. Now, this is the clean version. This is the edited version. The clean version doesn't it contain the N word in it. Let's go to clip number one, Shakita. Okay, take it off mute. Hey, y'all. I'm going to leave a short message here about why I decided to, why I decided to ask my music be pulled off of Spotify. So check this out. I empathize with the people who are leaving for the COVID disinformation reasons, and I think that they should. I also think that Joe Rogan has the right to say what he wants to say. I also think that I have the right to say what I want to say. So as an artist who builds Spotify is built on the back of the music streaming. So they take this money that's built from streaming and they pay this guy $100 million, but they pay us 0.003% of a penny. Just take me off. I don't want to generate money that pays this. Just take me off. That's where I'm at. And I know that uh, I'm actually, to be honest with you, surprised that my statements were picked up because I thought people weren't really going to listen to me because that's what I'm the kind of, that's what I'm used to from the industry. But I'm that I am being heard, and for that reason, I want to clarify my statements. Again, this is why. Watch this. So we know how social media can be. Things can be doctored. People are taken out of context. It's happened to me many times. However, I want to be clear. In no uncertain terms, where I stand on this, 
is that he shouldn't even be uttering the word. Don't even say it under any context. Don't say it. That's where I stand. It's my right to stand there. I have always stood there. I have other feelings about it, but those are nuances that are not meant for this moment. He shouldn't even be saying it. And so the confluence of energies comes into play here. So now we have this person who is offensive to a lot of people who paid $100 million. Spotify, the backbone of Spotify is the music. So you pay the musicians that are the backbone of your business. 0.003 to 0.005% of a penny, and you take this money that and you take this money that you generate over here, because all the rest of it goes somewhere. The subscription fees go somewhere. So you take this money that's generated over here and you use it to invest in this guy. Do what you want, but take me off. Or pay me too. And I don't just mean me, I mean us. Artists like me, pay us too. Pay podcasters of color too. Hello. So Artist Relations from Spotify called me yesterday. And they asked me what I want, and I've been thinking about this all night. I'm not going to say it all here, but what I want to say to you is something that I already knew, but I want you to know that they said it last night. Most of the streams on Spotify are black music. We know that if, you, if you're paying attention at all, you understand the role of black music in this world. So that's the deeper nuance. There's the musicians, there's the black music that is the backbone of the whole music industry, that's the backbone of Spotify too, who are historically underpaid and mistreated and all this stuff, just there's a historical context here that makes all this matter. And then there's this guy, and you take this money and you pay this guy who says this stuff? No. And so it took Anil Young to open the door for someone like me, but I walked through it because I've been standing at this door for a long time. One of the hashtags I put on my post, the written one was, what if we all leave? And that's what I'm trying to see if we could get to happen. What if we all leave? Then we can start having a conversation. It can go from a conversation to a negotiation. So that's where I'm at, y'all. And I'm going to get into my day. All right, y'all. Okay, so that was uh, India Ari on her Instagram page. Um, I think it's India.Ari on Instagram. I'll follow her there. Uh, well, India Ari on Instagram. Okay, and it's in her Instagram stories. It says um, uh, something like boycott Spotify or something like that. It has a it's a green uh, it's a green circle. Okay. So if we look at this article here, go back to this piece from insider.com. Um, we're coming up on a break. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. Now, Indy Ari, uh, back on February 4th, was on the Tamron Hall show where she explained this even more. We're going to go to that interview on the other side of the break. This deals with leveraging our economics to enforce our political agenda. Deadline.com reported that uh, the clips uh, of Joe Rogan using the N-word, which were posted to YouTube at one time, were made before he signed his $100 million Spotify deal, deal in 2020. Okay, I'm still mind boggled that this guy got a $100 million deal for a podcast. I'm still trying to figure that out. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation and Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995, and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008, and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. 
Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021 in her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis's books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Name 10, the Superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9 10 a.m. The Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022, and we are live. Call in numbers 313 778 7600. 313 778. 7,600 is the call in number if you have a quick question or comment. All right. So I uh, want to remind you, you can still register for the 10 week online class that I teach on the weekend. On Saturdays, it is Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And this class just started up um, this past weekend. This is a 10 week online class, 10 week online class. Uh, course that I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. Uh, next class is Saturday, February 12, 2022, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can register at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch them anytime. So a year from now, you can go back and watch the entire course. You can use this information with your children. I would say the information is PG-13. Uh, it's not overly graphic. Uh, I don't do a lot of cursing, things like this. I don't use racial slurs in the in the uh, in the class, et cetera. OK, and I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips. The, the class is on sale, 80 dollars, regularly 130 dollars. And then on Sundays, I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968, where we look at uh, in this class just started up also. And this class is Sunday, February 13th. We look at history basically from 1803, starting with the Louisiana Purchase and the Haitian. Re we look at the Louisiana Purchase, the Haitian Revolution, and uh, we go throughout history through the Civil War, uh, Reconstruction, 1865, 1877, Jim Crow era, um, World War One, World War Two, Great Migration, Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement. Uh, you, we have a bundle pack right now. You can register for both classes for only $120. That's a $260 value. If you've taken any of my online classes with me before, email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. You get a 50% off discount on the uh, on the bundle pack. All right. Uh, so I want to go to uh, clip number two. We're going to clip two here in just a second, Shakita. So right before the break, we were talking about um, India Ari, Grammy Award winner, uh, singer, songwriter, India Ari, who took to Instagram to uh, talk about the fact that she was removing her mu music from the streaming service Spotify. Insider.com has this article, India Ari shares clips of Joe Rogan saying the N-word as she asked Spotify to remove her music over his language around race. Now, the clips of Joe Rogan saying it were numerous times on his show. Now, also, there was one instance um, in, in, in the full video that Andy I posted. It actually had clips of him saying the N-word. So on Thursday, the Grammy Award winner shared to Instagram. This was uh, Thursday, February 3rd. 
uh, she shared, she returned to Instagram on Thursday, February 3rd, Indy Ire returned to Instagram to further clarify her statement by sharing more than 20 clips of Joe Rogan saying the N word on his Spotify podcast. Now, for those that don't know, Joe Rogan is a white man. His podcast is called the Rogan experience. One clip appeared to show Joe Rogan comparing uh, African-American neighborhoods to the planet of the apes. Okay. And you can uh, go on, on YouTube and uh, just type in Indy I read Joe Rogan and it'll come up with like the full video and come up with what he said. Cause I was watching it earlier today. It's still, it's still on her Instagram uh, memories. Also, you can watch it there as well. It's still on her Instagram memories and actually on her Instagram page. And I'll, I'll show you right now. Cause we still have it up here. Let me see something here. We've got, um, we go here in the re view profile. And if you go to, let's see, if we go to her Instagram page, cause I was on it today right here, where it says delete Spotify. Okay. This green, this green dot right there, delete Spotify. You click on that. It says delete Spotify boycott and it'll come up with it. Okay. It'll come up with it right there and you can watch the whole thing. And she has all the clips and everything of Joe Rogan. Okay. So he got busted. Now he came out and apologized. He said it was wrong. He shouldn't have done it. Blah, blah, blah. Like you a grown a man. You, you a grown ass man. You didn't know better when you were saying it. No, you, you just got caught. That's what it was. Okay. You just sorry. You got caught. It's not like you had an epiphany between now and then. It's not like you read, uh, you know, before the Mayflower or destruction of black civilization or, you know, uh, where do we go from here? Chaos or community by Dr. By, 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 uh, the, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. No, you just got caught. That's all it is to it. OK, so I want to go to this clip here. Clip number two. This is from Good Morning America. And they talked about uh, Indy Ire removing her music from Spotify. And why? Let's go to clip two, Shakita. popular podcaster Joe Rogan. He is apologizing this morning over past use of a racial slur. This as another artist asked Spotify to remove music in protest. ABC Zareen Shaw has more. Good morning, Zareen. Good morning, Eva. We cannot even tell you the first letter of the word that Joe Rogan once repeatedly used. That is how bad it is. The star podcaster now coming under even greater scrutiny. This morning, Spotify reportedly removing over 70 episodes of the Joe Rogan experience from their platform. This comes as the embattled podcaster is now apologizing for what he says is a regretful and shameful use of a racial slur multiple times over several years on his show. There's no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that word, never mind publicly on a podcast. And I agree with that now. I haven't said it in years. Rogan's use of the racial slur resurfacing after R&B singer India Ari posted a compilation spanning several years on Instagram. You know, the thing. Yeah. saying the word. I oh, already said D is just like saying. It's a video that's made of clips taken out of context of me of 12 years of conversations on my podcast. And it's all smushed together and it looks horrible even to me are we protesting rogan's language requesting spotify remove her music my hope is that some of my artist friends would follow and come along with me because one of the hashtags i put on my post was what if we all leave there is absolutely no circumstance that a white person should be using that racial slur period spotify has faced growing pressure over rogan's show artists like joni mitchell and neil young taking down their recordings over Rogan spreading COVID misinformation. Spotify right now is finding itself in a very serious predicament because on the one hand, they say they don't censor creators, but they've also got people saying things that are untrue and potentially damaging in a public health sense and racist on their platform. They've got to draw the line somewhere. Dwayne The Rock Johnson initially showed support for Joe Rogan through the COVID controversy, but he appears to be distancing himself now, tweeting that he did not know about the use of the racial slur. Meanwhile, Spotify has not publicly commented on the recent controversy. With? All right, Serene, thank you. Okay, pause it right there. 
Okay, so Dwayne The Rock Johnson has has withdrawn his support of Joe Rogan. I, I posted about this. It was an article from AtlantaBlackStar.com. We posted this on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. So I'll try to pull that up. Now, uh, now that piece from uh, Good Morning America, great reporting from Good Morning America once again. Um, that was from February, let's see what, I think that was February 2nd or something like that. Uh, no, I mean, February 4th, I think that was from Good Morning America. I'll try, I'll look at that clip again. So the, uh, on February 7th, okay, that was, uh, looks like February 6th from Good Morning America. So that was, um, Sunday, February 6th from Good Morning America looks like, because that's when it was posted on their YouTube channel. All right. Now, um, on February 7th, Washington Post has this piece from uh, dealing with this, uh, a comment remark from uh, the CEO of Spotify in memo to staff. We'll go to the phone lines when we come back from the break. So just stand by. In memo to staff, Spotify CEO stands by the Joe Rogan experience. Can't quote canceling voices is a slippery slope. Canceling voices is a slippery slope. End quote. So is it uh, okay? So so one day after Joe Rogan apologized for previously using the N word on on this podcast. Now in that clip that we just heard from Good Morning America, Joe Rogan said it was a compilation of excerpts taken out of context over 12 years okay he, he said he now knows that is wrong to use the n-word wait a second when did you come to the re realization that it was wrong for you to use the n-word and why didn't you go down and take down the, the the shows where you used it in the first place if now all of a sudden you come to this epiphany why didn't you take it down yourself he, no, you just got caught. That's all it is. So one day after Joe Rogan apologized for previously using the N-word on his podcast, Spotify chief executive Daniel Ek, E.K., told, uh, told employees that despite mounting controversies, pulling the Joe Rogan experience from the streaming platform would be a mistake. Pulling the Joe Rogan experience from the streaming platform would be a mistake. Quote, I do not believe that silencing... Uh, uh, Joe is the answer. Uh, David Eck, uh, uh, Daniel Eck wrote Sunday in the internal memo shared with the Washington Post, quote, we should have clear lines around content and take action uh, when they are crossed. But canceling voices is a slippery slope. Now, criticism of Rogan's uh, mega popular show, which is available exclusively on Spotify, has been building in recent weeks. Last month, more than 270 doctors and healthcare workers signed a letter urging Spotify to take action against Joe Rogan after Joe Rogan aired an episode the medical professional said spread false claims about the coronavirus. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. I'm going to let you hear Tamron Hall uh, from the, uh, I'm going to let you hear India Ari from the Tamron Hall show from a few days ago, where uh, India Ari explained this even more. You listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotep, looking for a deal from Spotify or somebody. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. What does self care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature, a chance to create something. Remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Calling numbers 313-778-7600. It's the calling number if you have a quick question or comment. Now, somebody posted here, NDRE didn't call Joe Rogan racist because I saw a comment from her saying she doesn't think he's racist or something like that. She doesn't have to get to a back and forth. When, you, when she starts, she, she didn't call him racist. She doesn't have to. She just has to press play. 
See, this is understanding strategy. She doesn't want to get into a back and forth with Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan has all these supporters behind. He has 6 million subscribers on Spotify, at least. She ain't trying to get into a back and forth with no ignorant ass like Joe Rogan and his followers. All she has to do is press play and just play his comments and go watch her full comments because she is making this bigger than Joe Rogan. She's talking about the way African-American artists are treated on the platform Spotify. So she don't have to get into a back and forth calling him racist, all this stuff. No, all she has to do is just press play. Go watch her full video. She don't have to get into that. This is understanding strategy. See, when you study the history of slavery in this country, there's a reason why most slaves who ran away, ran away at nighttime and not in the daytime. You got to understand strategy. You don't want to get into a back and forth calling, going, calling him racist, all this stuff. No, you don't have to do that. Okay. Let's go quickly here to the phone lines. Let's go to Charles, who's been holding patiently. Charles, thanks for holding. Welcome to the African History Network show. Uh, tell us where you're calling from. Uh, calling from Detroit, uh, Brother Michael. All right, go ahead. And listen, man, I, I believe in your show and what you stand for when it comes to biology, you know, worldwide. Because I say that because the world... Negro, the N word, people use that, you know, out uh -huh. of, you know, I use it out of respect. But I think, me personally, I think we would increase the, uh, what is that, uh, res uh, 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 disrespect by calling one another black, by calling one another white, when we got all this biracial. You'd be surprised how many biracial people are walking and talking in this world because ain't nobody got no straight up bloodlines for one particular ethnicity or okay. culture. We got Italian, Greek, mainly. You right. know, I sold the whole nine yards, but it's better to me. It's better, as far as I'm concerned, to call or to be more respectful by calling you by your ethnicity or your nationality. Okay. Whether you're Italian, Greek, whether you're Afro, uh, 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 you bang. Right, right. You know, Ethnicity uh, as opposed to color. You know, whatever the Afro, Afro, uh, 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 Right. Okay. I got what it, Charles. That, uh, We're running out of time, yeah. Charles. Ethnicity yeah. instead of color. I got it. All right. Call back tomorrow night. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Okay. Uh, Shakita, we're going to go to clip three. Uh, started at the 58 second mark. That's the clip from the Tamron Hall show. Um, so, uh, Indy Ire was on the Tamron Hall show February 8th and answered more questions that gave more insight into her stance regarding Spotify. Let's go to clip three. All right. Uh, okay. Our show from her home in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I can't wait to talk about so many things, but I've got to start with this big news um, that you just announced. In addition to that statement you put out on Instagram about the music industry, you have made a big decision. You are pulling your music and your podcast from the streaming platform Spotify. Joni Mitchell and Neil Young have been protesting the platform because of content on the Joe Rogan show related to COVID. You, though, have made the decision to pull your music and your podcast for a different reason, and it is about race. Yes, I decided to pull my music and my podcast from Spotify, but it's dual. It's one is the Joe Rogan conversation and for me, his language around race and some of the things I've seen and heard, but also coupled with that, there is the treatment of artists by Spotify. And so artists are underpaid and Joe, Joe Rogan gets paid all this money. And it's hard for me to, these days, just sit back and go, oh, well, that's how it goes. I made a commitment with myself after reading this book by Martha Betts called The Way of Integrity. She challenges the reader to an integrity cleanse. And it means telling the whole truth all the time and see what it will make of your life. And so when this came up, I, I had to do it. And I'm a little bit nervous about it because I know people are going to conflate the conversations and some people are going to judge me and they're going to 
say it's not my business and, you know, all these things, because it is a little bit of a different reason than Joni and Neil. And so I am working to have it pulled down. I'm getting a little bit of pushback um, from one of the labels I was with for a long time, but I'm still, I'm still trying because it's true for me. Have you heard from Spotify since this decision? I saw some text from someone from Spotify, but I couldn't dig into it, but it was just minutes ago. And so I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know what it is, but I was like excited, but I was like, I, I, I don't want to be later than Cameron. So <laughs> I had to rush to get out. Well, you know, thank you for joining us in the midst of this developing story. I know that this is a huge decision for you. What would make you feel comfortable having your music streamed on that platform as it relates to the concerns you have, particularly with language coming from that podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast? You know, I said in my statement that I believe in freedom of speech, and I do. I mean, as much as I think some of the things I've heard him say in these videos is disgusting, he can say it. What would make me comfortable is if they were, if there were, voices of integrity and high consciousness amplified as loud as it is. Mm. I'm, I'm not being technical because I don't know this world very well, but in our community, the music community, we all have a great reverence for, say, um, West Love, who has a wonderful big podcast, but does he get paid $100 million? Those okay, kind of things pause, like pause it right there, Shakita, pause it the right podcast. there. Pause it right there. All right, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. We're going to keep going with this. Uh, if you'd like this type of information, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, they help support us till we, I can get a $100 million uh, contract uh, for, for a podcast. Uh, <laughs> Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. You can also support us through Cash App and uh, PayPal right on our website also, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And I'll be doing a special broadcast on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our social media platforms with my uh, sex therapist uh, experts and relationship experts dealing with uh, A.J. Johnson, uh, dealing with her comments on the uh, Angela Yee podcast, okay? Uh, so we'll talk about that as well. As well, baby boy actress AJ Johnson describes threesome with two men as fifth as best fiftieth birthday ever. It beats the hell out of going to Applebee's for your birthday. I tell you that. But uh, <laughs> not that I would know. But uh, right now, it's correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Stand by. Okay, let's go back to this clip here from. Um, uh, this is from the Tamron Hall show. Let me cue this back up. All right. Stand by, everybody. Share this broadcasting on social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. And then I want to go back to the uh, article from the, the comment from the CEO of, of Spotify. Canceling voices is a slippery slope. So is it all right? Do, do do you have African American podcasters on Spotify calling white people racial epithets and calling Jews racial slurs and things like that? Is that okay? I'm just I'm just curious. Do you just pull their you just remove those shows and leave them on? Is it is that okay? I'm I'm just curious. Uh okay, so this is from this is from the, the Time and Hall show, uh February 4th, 2022. Let's cue this back up here. Stand by. All right, let's go back to this. Okay, so uh, Grammy Award winning singer and songwriter Indy Ari joins Tamron Hall for a candid conversation, for a candid conversation about her career and experience experiences in the music industry. She says circumstances over the years have let have left her to believe that the industry, the music industry is racist, racist, sexist and deceitful. Also recently announcing uh, that she'll be pulling her catalog and podcast from Spotify. The 20 year music veteran details how the platform support of podcaster Joe Rogan led her to this new revelation. Okay, let's go back to this interview. 
question. I saw some text from someone from Spotify, but I couldn't dig into it, but it was just minutes ago. And so I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know what it is, but I was like excited, but I was like, I, I, I don't want to be later than Tamron. So <laughs> I had to rush and get out. Well, you know, thank you for joining us in the midst of this developing story. I know that this is a huge decision for you. What would make you feel comfortable having your music streamed on that platform as it relates to the concerns you have, particularly with language coming from that podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast? You know, I said in my statement that I believe in freedom of speech and I do. I mean, as much as I think some of the things I've heard him say in these videos is disgusting, he can say it. What would make me comfortable is if they were, if there were voices of integrity and high consciousness amplified as loud as his. Mm. I'm, I'm not being technical because I don't know this world very well, but in our communities, the music communities, we all have a great reverence for, say, um, Quest Love, who has a wonderful big podcast, but does he get paid $100 million? Those kind of things, like the equity, even in the podcast world, I'd love to see. But also what would make me comfortable is for artists to get paid more than a fraction of a penny. And so now we're all amplified and not just him. To your point with Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and others, their issue was with guests and content on his show that were deemed COVID disinformation. And because of that, Spotify responded late Sunday saying it will add a content advisory label to any podcast episode that includes a discussion about COVID-19. Um, Rogan, Joe Rogan, in a video on Instagram, he said that he's not trying to promote misinformation or be controversial, saying that he will, quote, do his best to make sure um, that he's researched these topics and try harder to get people with differing opinions. Would you like to see a statement more specifically from Joe Rogan as it relates to your concern about race? Personally, yes. I'm curious what all that is. Because, you know, social media does things and they have these spliced together from saying the N-word all these different times. I don't know the context, I, but I would love to hear him address it. So having your podcast removed and having your music removed from this streaming platform is the way right now you feel you can find peace with this. My hope is that some of my artist friends would follow and come along with me. Because one of the hashtags I put on my post was, what if we all leave? Because if you take the power from them, the power is taken. And also streaming doesn't pay artists a lot. Any No platform pays as much as the art is actually worth. But, you know, if you ask the artist, it's worth more than gold. But that's how we feel about our art. But some of the other streaming platforms pay better. And so if we all leave Spotify or enough of us leave, they'll either change it or people who want to hear you will stream you somewhere else where you can get paid better. Mm. And so... This is all wishful thinking, though, because the truth is I did it because it's true for me and it's what brought me peace because I can't not tell the truth. It's a pact I've made with myself. And that pact you have been maintaining, including in the post that you recently put up, criticizing the music industry, coming up why India Ari says she'll never heal from everything she experienced in the music industry. We'll be right back. Okay, and we'll pick this up on the other side of this commercial. Okay, so we're going back to that. All right, now uh, we're going to come back to that here in just a second. I want to uh, go back to this article from the Washington Post, and then we're going to do an update in the Amir Locke uh, case out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, a teen has been arrested in connection to the search warrant that led to Amir Locke's death then I have to get out of here because I didn't get to bed at six this morning. I was up working and editing video and uh, it's been a busy day. Okay. Criticism of Joe Rogan's. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go back to this uh, article here from the Washington post. This is uh, in memo to staff. Spotify CEO stands by the Joe Rogan experience canceling voices is a slippery slope canceling voices is a slippery slope now this article is from uh monday february 7th 2022 so if we go back where we left off here um let's see here where was that 
okay hold on let me back up okay so on friday about 70 episodes of the joe rogan experience were removed from the spotify platform without explanation i'm now hearing it's been 120 episodes now the next day joe rogan addressed the compilation video and apologized for using racial slurs calling it quote the most regretful and shameful thing i've ever had to talk about publicly end quote now um ceo um for uh, Spotify, Daniel Eck, uh, in a letter to staff on Sunday said that Joe Rogan, not Spotify, had chosen to pull the episodes. Joe Rogan, not Spotify, had chosen to pull the episodes. Okay, so now, okay, so so let's back up. Now, Joe Rogan gets called out by NDRE. Joe Rogan then, okay, in clarification from uh, Daniel Eck, CEO of Spotify. Joe Rogan then pulls the 70 episodes himself, not Spotify. Why didn't you pull the episodes before you got called up by NDRE? Why didn't you, you just came to this realization that is wrong after she called you out, put you on blast? That, that's when you came to real, real, realization that NDRE had because because the video that NDRE did went viral on, on, on her um, on her Instagram. The video went viral and NDRE has nine hundred fifty seven thousand followers on Instagram, but it went viral. People are sharing it on YouTube. I saw it on Instagram from somebody else's post. I shared it on my Facebook pages. It went viral. So why didn't you pull? Did you all did you forget that you used the N-word in like at least 70 episodes? You or somebody else that was there with you? Did you forget? All of a sudden you had like total recall, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger in his movie Total Recall. Why didn't you pull those before now? So if we go back to uh, this piece here from the Washington Post, then we're going to go back to the interview that NDRE did with Tamron Hall. Quote, I think it's important, uh, Daniel X, CEO of Spotify, said, I think it's important you're aware that we've had conversations with Joe Rogan and his team about some of the content in his show, including the history of using some racially insensitive language. Following these discussions and his own reflections, he chose to remove a number of episodes from Spotify. Okay, now let's look at this. Let's go back and look at this. So, Rogan said the usage of the N-word was over the course of 12 years. All right. Now, the $100 million deal that he signed with uh, Spotify, he signed that in 2020, according to uh, the article from uh, businessinsider.com. If we go back to businessinsider.com, this article right here entitled, let's see, this article right here from businessinsider.com, NDRE shares clips of Joe Rogan saying the N-word as she asked Spotify to remove her music over his language around race. This is from February 5th, 2022. Now in here, it says that, uh, okay. On Thursday, the, okay, uh, so she posted 20 clips of Rogan. Deadline.com reported that the clips which were posted to YouTube at one time were made before Joe Rogan signed his $100 million Spotify deal in 2020. So Spotify, 
what type of research did you do on Joe Rogan before you signed this one hundred million dollar deal with him? Did you knew? Did you know that he used the N word repeatedly on his podcast before you signed this one hundred million dollar deal with him, or did you just overlook it because you didn't care? Did you know that Joe Rogan used the N word repeatedly? on his podcast over the course of 12 years before you signed this $100 million deal with him or did, did you not care? So let's go back to this from the Washington Post. In memo to staff, Spotify CEO stands by the Joe Rogan experience saying canceling voices is a slippery slope. So the chief executive added, uh, Daniel Eck, added, he, quote, strongly condemns what Joe Rogan has said. He called some of Rogan's past comments incredi incredibly hurtful and stressed that they do not represent the values of Spotify. They do not represent the values of Spotify. So here's the full statement. From um, CEO Daniel Eck to Spotify staff, Spotify team, there are no words I can say to adequately convey how deeply sorry I am for the way the Joe Rogan experience controversy continues to impact each of you. Not only are some of Joe Rogan's comments incredibly hurtful, I want to make clear that they do not represent the values of this company. I know this situation leaves many of you feeling drained, frustrated, and unheard, underpaid also. I think it's important you're aware that we've had conversations with Joe and his team about some of the content in his, in his show, including his history of using some racially insensitive language. Okay, now they posted this on Twitter. Let's look at the full statement on Twitter. Well, this was uh, shared to Twitter. Let me flip over to this Twitter page here. Okay, I think it's important you are aware that we've had conversations with Joe and his team about some of the content in his show, including his history of using some racially insensitive language. So even even Spotify CEO admits that it's, it's it's a history. He admits it wasn't one or two instances. It's a history. It wasn't like over one or two months. This is over years. Following these discussions and his own reflections, he chose to remove a number of episodes from Spotify. He also issued his own apology over the weekend. Okay. All right, so I want to go back to the piece from the Washington Post. All right, now, the controversy over the Joe Rogan experience comes as Spotify aggressively plots a takeover of the audio industry. The, the, the controversy over the Joe Rogan experience comes as Spotify aggressively plots a takeover of the audio industry including the growing podcast sector the company acquired joe rogan's show in a reported 100 million dollar deal and it has paid top dollar for other popular podcast properties including a 340 million dollar purchase of podcast networks, Gimlet and Anchor. Damn. Three hundred and forty million dollars for these for these podcast networks. All right. Now, Daniel X, CEO of Spotify, said those ambitions ambitions sometimes clash with Spotify's ability or desire to moderate content. 
as Spotify works toward becoming the top global audio platform. Daniel X said, quote, these kinds of disputes will be inevitable. These kinds of disputes will be inevitable. Well, not if you have a policy that says you can't use racial slurs on the air, because I, I bet you if Mr. Louis Farrakhan wanted to have a podcast, I bet you wouldn't let him. I bet you Mr. Louis Farrakhan had a podcast and he was saying things about Jews that you agree with, you pull it. it. So it's like, this really ain't that difficult. These kinds of disputes will be inevitable. Not if you have a, not if you have a policy that you can't use racial slurs for different ethnic groups and things like this. Spotify's stance in many ways echoes how Netflix responded to the controversy surrounding its Dave Chappelle stand-up special, The Closer, last fall, while a number of critics panned the highly watched special as transphobic. Netflix uh, chief executive Ted Sarandos said the program did not violate the company's guidelines on hate speech and violence, and he declined demands to remove it from the streaming service. But this is this is different. This is uh, this is different than that. See, once again, my question. So it appears that at least the majority of Joe Rogan using the N word on his podcast was before he signed the deal with Spotify. Has he done it since he signed the deal with Spotify one and two, what type of research did you do on his show before you signed the deal? And three, if you knew that he had a history of using the N word, why'd you sign the deal? Spotify. Daniel Eck. As with our other talent, we work hard to support their creative freedom, even though this means there will always be content on Netflix. Some people believe is harmful. Ted Sarandis, co-CEO of uh, CEO of Netflix, uh, said. Now, in an attempt to promote diversity of voices, Daniel Eck said Spotify would spend $100 million obtaining and promoting music and other types of audio content from creators belonging to historically marginalized groups, historically marginalized groups. While some might want us to pursue a different path, I believe that more speech on more issues can be highly effective in improving the status quo and enhancing the conversation altogether, he said. So let me get this straight. You have one white man that you signed a contract with for a hundred million dollars. Now in an attempt to promote a diversity of voices, you're going to spend a hundred million dollars obtaining and promoting music and other types of audio content from creators belonging to historically marginalized groups. So you're going to spread out a hundred million dollars over numerous people who belong to marginalized groups. And you're going to pay this white man using the N word a hundred million dollars. Okay. All right. Uh, see now, see I, I, I see why NDI Re said take my take my plat take my music off that platform because they use the money generated from NDI Re and other African American artists they use that money generated from them and pay them a fraction of a penny they use that money generated from African American artists to pay Joe Rogan and that's why she said take take my music off of that Take, take my music off the platform and we go back to uh, her we go back to her Instagram post she breaks she breaks it down there because I've talked to uh I've talked to people in the industry as well and they said you know if, if you if you think if you think the contracts 
that people had 20, 30 years ago where they got like a dollar for every, well, actually, if you got a dollar for every CD sold, you were doing good. You got like what? 90 cents, 70 cents, 80 cents for every CD sold. Okay. Now they're getting a fraction of a penny when you stream a song. Pain musician. This is this is the post NDRE did on her Instagram page. Paying musicians a fraction of a penny. And him one hundred million dollars. Him referring to Joe Rogan. Okay, uh, I want to go back to this interview that she did with um, Tamron Hall, and she talks about the music industry being racist and um and sexist and how she was uh harmed by the music industry uh she charges that the music industry is racist sexist and deceitful in the re who went viral a few weeks ago after posting a series of instagram posts calling out the music industry for being quote racist sexist and deceitful when you hit send on that post what did that feel like for you i was just speaking my mind that day i didn't feel like here we go i'm about to wind people up i didn't feel like that at all i just felt like these are things i i want to say mm. and so it wasn't that i felt the way when i pushed send it was how i felt with the response yeah like a lot of my girlfriends were like you're on this website today you're on this one today and i was kind of like this is fun it's nice to be seen for yourself because, you know, when you're a celebrity, you know, your unspoken job description is to make sure everyone likes you. Right. And I am i don't have a need. I'm learning that that's not real and it's not possible. And so it just has been fulfilling and kind of fun. Well, I honest. think you, you hit on a note about it because sometimes having respect is more fulfilling than being liked. Um, and I think that's the challenge, especially for women. Um, we fall into that likability trap and we seed um, respect. I know that looking back at this decision to release this, you reference back to the 44th Grammy Awards that year um, was the first time that you were nominated. You got seven nominations for Acoustic Soul. And we all know the story. You, you went home empty handed. But looking back at that loss, you thought it was politically motivated. And now you have all of these artists whether it is um, the questions about Beyonce and others not receiving Grammy accolades that the wide audience believes that they deserve. Um, what is your take at this point on the Grammys and, and its acknowledgement, particularly of artists like you? What we're told in the industry is that the Grammy is, is the night where it's about the music. But really, you know, there are a lot of other award shows that are about chart positions and who's popular and it's fine because they don't say they're about the music, they say they're about the charts. But the Grammys tells us that it's this certain thing and that it's about the integrity and the music and the music community voting for its peers. But in the end, there are all these political um, happenings that come into play that make it so that the awards can be skewed when you're a label executive with a lot of power, you can make sure that all the people on your label get album credits so that they can vote and they can vote for your artists. But also a lot of it comes down to race, which is kind of how it is in the world in general. And so if you are an artist and the person who backs you is the most powerful white man in the music industry, you're going to have a better chance, period. It doesn't matter what your music is doing or you're going to have a better chance at winning. If like me, when I came into the music industry and I have to give a shout out to the label executive who signed me, his name was Kadar Massenberg. And he was innovative, he was different. He was a young guy, he was in his thirties. He gave us Erica Badu and me and D'Angelo, he was innovative. And so this man had these things going on that could compete with the big guys in the rooms, but who's gonna win in the end? And so it's not necessarily politically motivated, but it's political. And so if we know that, then we know, instead of thinking this is the music industry's night where it's fair and it's about the peers and the peers voting, because it's not just that. This affected so, your mental health. This affected how you saw yourself and true. you've described it as trauma. 
Yes. So when I first went to the Grammys, I was 25, 26. And so I'm learning how the world is, how politics work inside of companies through the lens of the music industry. It definitely made me question myself. Where I sit today, I know what matters and what doesn't matter. And the difference in an award and a reward, like I once heard Patti LaBelle say. Yeah. And so I, my career has been very rewarding. Yeah. But the awards have been uh, blocked and all kinds of things, politicized. But back then, when I was young, it was just like, I don't have a better word than hurtful. I remember getting in bed after the Grammys because Stevie Wonder, who's one of my heroes and mentors, he wanted to go to dinner and I just could not function. Uh -huh. I was like, I'm going back to the hotel. He was mad, but not mad. He was like annoyed that I couldn't just, let's just go, you know. But, and also when that night he cried too. Uh -huh. I went to his dressing room and I was just sitting in there with him and I just saw a tear roll from under his glasses because he cried for how much I hurt, like it hurt. And then I went back to my hotel room and I just kind of like got ready to pull the cover over my head and he called. Mm. And I was having like this little chest pain. I've never, I haven't had a chest pain since, <laughs> but I had like this little chest pain that he called and said, you know, he said, you are so lovely and this business is so not. Oh. And it took me years to, first of all, to understand that by losing that big, it made it a story where I was seen but I'm still in that space of like wanting to clear it up and wanting to not have it stuck in my throat because you know, the pre my publicist and the people who love me said, well, you know, don't say, don't say anything because then you might not win next year, but then next year comes and you don't win anyway. So what matters? Right. And so it did affect my mental health, but it also just grew me up like life does. <laughs> right. All right. So fantastic. Um, uh interview that Tamron Hall did on the Tamron Hall show uh, with Indy Ari, uh Grammy Award winning uh, singer, songwriter, Indy Ari. That's from February 4th, 2022. That's on Tamron Hall's YouTube channel. Okay. Um, all right. I want to switch gears and I want to go to an update dealing with um, uh, Amir Locke. How's everybody doing? Hey, if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. And even though I, uh, I'm on 910 AM Superstation WFDF here in Detroit, I don't get paid to do radio. Uh, so some people who follow me for some time know that. Uh, this is our official cash app account, dollar sign, the AHN show. And uh, when you go to it, it says Michael shows my picture there. These other ones here are fake African History Network cash app accounts. And we also have the link uh, to uh, a PayPal as well. So you can support us there uh, also. And you can register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. We have them in a bundle pack on sale, only $120, $260 value for both classes. From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Uh, we do that on Sundays and Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. These classes just started up. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch them anytime. Okay, so when we look at, um, we have a couple updates here dealing with uh amir Locke. so there's uh this one story from uh abc news and i'm going to pull this one up here from abc news uh there's been an arrest made regarding the uh, uh the warrant the uh search warrant and the warrant was the initial warrant was for um Re recovering, retrieving property uh, regarding an investigation into a homicide. Okay. And um, Amir Locke was not the target of the, um, was not the target of the uh, warrant. Let me pull this up here. Okay, so um, we also saw students walk out of uh, 
school and protest today as well. And let me change this here. So there's a there's a story from ABC News from today. Teen arrested in connection to search warrant that led to Amir Locke's death. Teen arrested in connection to search warrant that led to Amir Locke's death. And okay. I just want to change the caption here. All right. If we look at this piece here from uh, ABC News from February 8th, 2022. Uh, a 17-year-old has been arrested in connection to the search warrant that led to the death of Amir Locke, 22 years old who was shot and killed by Minneapolis, uh, by a Minneapolis police officer, a member of a SWAT team, uh, executing a no-knock warrant, executing a no-knock warrant. Now this happened uh, last Wednesday. Now, Amir Locke, uh, uh, Amir Locke was shot last Wednesday. Amir Locke was shot uh, last Wednesday. He was not named in the no-knock warrant, according to civil rights attorney, Benjamin Crump. The warrant was executed on behalf of the St. Paul Police Department, who was searching for a homicide suspect. Now, body camera footage um, showed officers executing the no-knock search warrant and finding a mere lock who had been sleeping under a blanket on the couch and holding a gun. Now, as we showed you on uh, yesterday's show, the uh, or, uh, as we showed you on our Monday show, um, when you look at the still photo right before Amir, uh, Amir is shot, just a second before he's shot, he's holding the gun. His finger is on the barrel of the gun. His finger is not on the trigger. His finger is outside the trigger guard on the barrel of the gun which is uh, when you go through firearms training, you're taught you don't put your finger on the trigger till you're going to pull the trigger till you're going to shoot. Okay. And he was a legal gun owner and had a permit to carry a gun as well. Now, Amir Locke is seen holding a gun as he sits up and was shot less than 10 seconds after officers entered the room, still covered in the blanket. The suspect, uh, uh, the suspect, Amir Locke's 17 year old cousin, the suspect who was arrested as Amir Locke's 17 year old cousin, was arrested Monday afternoon in Winona, Minnesota, the St. Paul Police Department said Tuesday. Officers from the Minneapolis Police Department had been to the apartment where Amir Locke was killed 10 times in the last seven months for 911 related uh, 911 calls related to threats, disturbances, narcotic activity, suspicious activity, and domestic abuse, according to 911 calls obtained by ABC News. Now, once again, Amir Locke wasn't the target of the search warrant. It wasn't a, a, a suspect in, in anything. He was just there visiting his cousin. He was just there, innocent visiting his cousin. But uh, in 911 calls obtained by ABC News, um, police had been to that apartment where Amir, Amir Locke was killed. They had been there. 10 times in the last seven months. Now, the most recent 911 calls have been placed for unknown trouble on February 1st, 2022, and a suspicious person on January 19th, 2022, according to police records. Police had obtained a search warrant for the apartment which belongs to a family friend 
of the suspect's brother. Police had obtained a search warrant for the apartment, which belongs to a family friend of the suspect's brother. Because staff at the apartment building told investigators that the suspect had a key to the unit and because he was present dur during numerous occasions when officers responded to 911 calls. In a statement, attorney Benjamin Crump, one of the attorneys for the family of Amir Lott, said the family and their legal team is aware of the arrest, adding that Amir Lott's cousin was not in the apartment at the time of the shooting adding that Amir Locke's cousin was not in the apartment at the time of the shooting. Quote, all available information confirms that Amir was never a target of that investigation of those search warrants. We must remain focused on the fact that Amir was an innocent young man. Uh, uh, the, an innocent young man of a raid gone terribly wrong who who is now the latest st statistic and victim of the dangerous and intrusive no-knock warrant techniques that must be banned, end quote. Now, over the weekend, a caravan of about 50 vehicles drove through Minneapolis during a demanding justice for Mayor Locke, some in front of the home of Interim Police Chief Amel Amelia, uh, Amelia Huffman, demanding that she resign from her post. The officer who shot Amir Locke, identified uh, by police as uh, Officer Mark Hanneman, Hanneman, was placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation in accordance with department policy. All right, so check out this article from ABC News, teen arrested in connection to search warrant that led to Amir Locke's death. This is from February 8th, 2022. Now, there was, uh, so on yesterday's show, we talked about uh, the news that came out yesterday, uh, February 7th, that the uh, judge that presided over the Derek Chauvin murder trial, Judge Peter Cahill, was the, the, the judge who likely signed the search warrant that led to the fatal police shooting of Amir Locke. NBC News reported on February 7th, 2022, Judge Peter Cahill was the judge, was the signing judge last week, which means he would have reviewed and signed off on applications for search warrants, a court spokesman said. Okay, just Peter Cahill, we all saw him presiding over the, the Derek Chauvin murder trial, murder trial and the murder of uh, George Floyd. So read this article here also. We talked about this on yesterday's show. Now, there was a protest um, today you had Students who walked out of school, student, students protest a mirror lock killing, demand lawmakers ban no-knock warrants. Minnesota CBS Local has a story on this. We're going to go to that here in just a second. Let me, uh, okay, let's pull that up. Okay, students uh, protest a mere lot killing. Demand lawmakers ban no knock warrants. And I think we have this story here also. There was another rally earlier today. Some St. Paul students marched to the governor's residence to, man, to demand a ban on no knock warrants. Students across Minnesota were encouraged to walk out of class this afternoon to demand justice for Amir Locke. Our Kate Raddatz shares their message. 
protect young black lives. Those are the words that a crowd of hundreds carried through St. Paul. Students from Central High School walked out of class in protest of the death of Amir Locke. It's truly really traumatizing to know that I have cousins, friends, uncles, even brothers that have to worry about their lives and can be taken in a matter of seconds. <laughs> They marched to the governor's residence, calling for a ban on no-knock warrants. Minnesota teen activists organized the event. They also want a full review of MPD's SWAT practices and the resignation of the interim Minneapolis Police Chief Amelia Huffman and Mayor Jacob Fry. Most people are mad. I'm feeling mad too. Somebody was busting my house and like I had a gun, I would have been in the same situation he was. I would have been scared. The message went beyond the walls of schools. There were parents in the crowd, too. Denise showed up to support her kids walking out of class from their school in Minneapolis in protest. This young man that was sleeping, just a, he's a couple years older than my kids, and I, it's, it's, I, we can't stand for it. I want them to, like, hold the police accountable. Kate Braddett's WCCO 4 News. We reached out to the governor's office for comment on today's protest, but have not yet heard back. All right. So good local reporting from WCCO News, CBS Local Channel 4 here in Minnesota. All right. Now, um, if we look at this here, protect young black lives, protect young black lives. Let me go back to the article here. Those are the words that a crowd of hundreds, uh, a crowd of hundreds, hundreds carried through St. Paul as students throughout the Twin Cities walked out of class on Tuesday in protest of the police killing of Amir Locke. Now, uh, hundred in St. Paul, Minnesota, hundreds of students at Central High School gathered outside of the building around noon to hold a rally, which was organized by the Black Student Union and the nonprofit organization, Minnesota Teen Activists, Minnesota Teen Activists. All right, and I don't know why this, Ad is popping up here. But anyway, okay. So read the rest of this article here from uh, CBS Minnesota Channel 4. And this is from uh, February 8th, 2022. All right. Uh, on Wednesday, February 9th, I'll be doing I'll, I'll, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to have a panel discussion with a group of African-American female uh, experts, um, relationships experts and um, sex therapists, etc. And we're going to discuss uh, the comments from A.J. Johnson. We remember her from House Party and Baby Boy, and uh, she has a TV show on TV One now, uh, dealing with therapy. But I posted this on our Facebook fan page uh, a few days ago. I think it's February 4th. There's a big uh, article from blackamericaweb.com that went viral. Baby Boy actress A.J. Johnson describes threesome with two men as best 50th birthday ever as best 50th birthday ever. And I, I posted about this um, on our fan page. I said, we we're going to have a panel discussion about it. Uh, this right here, this right here. I said, um, so which, uh, so which one of my African-American female sex therapist friends want to be on my panel? Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion on my show. It's not going to be on 9, 10 a.m. WFDF. This is uh, too hot for that. We're going to do this on my social media platforms Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 9th. I said, all I'm going to say is I'm not going to criticize her. Baby boy actress A.J. Johnson describes threesome with two men as best birthday ever. Okay. So. Uh, we're going to have a in-depth conversation about this, but also like a double standard, because one of the reasons why I want to have this conversation is um, I saw a lot of comments. So I posted this on our fan page, the African History Network, and it got uh, 
I think over 1500 likes and it got hundreds and hundreds of comments. And I looked at a lot of the comments and a lot of the women were saying good for her or his business things like that. So what her business or good for her, I'm not mad at her, et cetera. Um, but with the men, they largely fell into two categories. One, uh, so some of the men said, okay, that's fine. It's her business. A few of the men said, why didn't she call me? But another group of men automatically came to the conclusion. They either said she was a whore or they said the two guys ran a train on her. Now, obviously, you didn't like really read the article. And in the article is also the um, panel discussion from Angela Yee's podcast where they discuss this. It was a group of women discussing this topic. Okay. It was a group of women discussing this topic. It's here. AJ Johnson, the lip service, Angela Yee. Because if you actually take the time to listen to the interview and listen to AJ Johnson's comments, the two men were there to service her as opposed to the other way around. And somehow a lot of men just saw this from a one way perspective as the men dominating her. AJ Johnson let AJ Johnson break down the dynamics of a, of a guy, of a guy, girl, guy, threesome below via uh, lip service. Lip service is the name of the podcast. Okay. So we're, we're going to talk about this um, Wednesday, 8 PM Eastern standard time. All right. And break this down uh, panel discussion. Be here on Facebook and YouTube uh, for that. Okay. Sign up for our email newsletter, text the word uh, Kemet K E M E T the 22828 to sign up for our email newsletter. Also visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. You can register for our email newsletter there as well. It's free and uh, you'll get emails. I'm trying to send them out before we do our show. It's just so busy trying to prepare, but uh, I'll be sending it out Wednesday, definitely before our 8 p.m. panel discussion. Okay, be sure to register for the online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, where they didn't teach you in school. Uh, we do this on Saturday. Class just started up. This is a 10-week online class I teach. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. So the class is regularly $130. It's on sale $80. As soon as you register, you can start watching the content. And uh, we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. And so as soon as you register, you can watch the class we did uh, this past Saturday. Even a year, uh, and once you register for the class, you have full access to it. So even a year later, you can go back and watch the entire course, okay? And then on Sundays, I teach from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. And we go through each class, go through and analyze approximately a uh, 10, 15, 20 year period of history to see what happened to us after slavery ended. And we look at the Reconstruction era. We look at the Civil War, Reconstruction era, Jim Crow era, World War One, World War Two, Great Migration, Harlem Renaissance, um, Civil Rights Movement and Black Power Movement. OK, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power. 1865 to 1968 next class is sunday february 13th we do that 2 p.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time and we have the classes in the bundle pack also so you can register you can get both classes for only 120 dollars that's a 260 dollar value if you've taken classes with me before in any of my online classes in the past email me at ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com ahn show at africanhistorynetwork.com and get a 50% uh, discount on, on these classes here in the bundle pack, 50% off on the bundle pack. All right. Okay, look, we have to get out of here. Remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. 
because right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We'll kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995 and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008 and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021 and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into the psyche of black people from ancient to contemporary times. She cuts no corners and leaves no stones unturned in relating truth, letting the chips fall where they may on both African and European doorsteps. Order Jeanette Davis' books today at Amazon.com. Search for Jeanette Davis and get to know her work today. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry, it's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre, I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. iRedify is a black owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read eBooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property. And two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing costs, which can be thousands of dollars. They close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com. That's AbundantCapitalGroup.com. And email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group.
What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Soul in Motion, celebrating 38 years in the arts. This energetic ensemble of dancers and drummers was started by percussionist Michael Friend and is led by choreographer, associate director Pam Lassiter. Based in the Washington, D.C. area, Soul in Motion is now accepting bookings for Black History Month, Juneteenth, and summer festivals in 2022. Soul in Motion is also available for more intimate events like naming ceremonies and weddings. To find out more or book your date, call 240-452-1349 or send an email to info at soulinmotion.org. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Soul in Motion, celebrating our history, our culture, our future. Soul in